Andy Petrillo, Gareth Wheeler with you, bringing in Gareth, because as we know, this week, the Canadian men's national team gathering for a camp in Florida. They'll be seeing each other for the first time in a very long time. But Gareth, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. So as we get some details from you, let's begin with the obvious. What are some of the protocols? What are some of the challenges as well that John Herdman is facing in getting all these players together? I think challenge, you can underline that word multiple times, Andy, because to make this happen, it's taken John Herman and Canada soccer to move the earth, move mountains, move oceans in order to make this thing happen. I mean, they wanted to have a camp in November, and unfortunately that got uh, cancelled because of the increases in cases of COVID, where they were supposed to play Japan in Austria in November, and this camp has taken many iterations. Uh, originally, Canada was supposed to play two games against Panama, one in Panama, one back in Florida. But obviously, those circumstances changed and Panama had to back out. So here we are with Canada finally going down to Bradenton, Florida uh, to play at IMG over the next two weeks to get this team together for the first time since last January, their camp where they played Iceland in a, in a friendly. Now, they've undergone COVID testing uh, two series of it here in Canada before even going to Florida. And there seems to be maybe some speculation that there might be some delayed entries or some players that may be arriving at camp later uh, based upon what their COVID tests actually come out and say. The players that do arrive in Florida will have to isolate for a day before being able to go out and get on the training pitch. But there are some players that will not be making the trip, Andy, mm -hmm. um, to Florida. Liam Miller who's just made the move from Liverpool to Charlton on loan. He will not be attending this camp as originally planned. It was thought that Liverpool would keep him, uh, Liam, around until after the FA Cup ties, but he's been put on loan, which is a great move for Liam, by the way, but he will not be attending Canada's camp. Liam Fraser also will not be attending. Uh, he suffered an ankle injury. He'll be out in about probably another five weeks, so he will not be attending this camp as well. And there are some other names up in the air just because of COVID testing, whether the teams want their players players going away on international duty so stay tuned for more information as it comes out and we'll see who actually lands uh, on Friday and Saturday and who may be joining up with the rest of the group a little bit later on in the two-week span. We know the U.S. national team is training close by you're mentioning a lot of these friendlies that have been cancelled obviously because of COVID concerns so what does the camp schedule even look like what is it that Herdman is trying to accomplish here other than practicing and scrimmaging with his own guys? Yeah, well, well, there will be a scrimmage on the 13th, uh, followed by multiple training sessions after that. And then there will be these competitive scrimmages. And I'm presuming nothing's being announced, but you can just connect the dots here that there will be at least one, potentially two scrimmages against the U.S. Uh, men's national team, this combination of an under-23 team and a, and a full men's national team over the course of the two weeks. Uh, that seems to be the logical move at this point. And those games will be played on the 17th and the 23rd. As for the priorities of the camp, I think it's like twofold. And the first of all, the priority of this camp isn't the under 23s. It's really the Canadian men's national team first and foremost. And there's three specific goals that John Herdman wants to accomplish in this camp. One is tactical immersion or re-immersion for the players that are coming into camp. Some of the players like Azorio, Piet, Kay, Cavallini, players that have been with the Canadian men's national team uh, before they want to bring them back in and have them in a position where they can hit the ground running come March, Andy, against Bermuda, as the team will only be together two days before that all-important World Cup qualifying match. So making sure that there's immersion back into what the men's national team wants to do. Um, and, and, and you want to welcome in the new players, and there was 11 of them, of them uh, named on the initial roster, make sure that they're up to speed and they kind of understand the identity of what the group is all about and what they want to accomplish as well. There's also going to be an assessment of players and new players coming into Canadian men's national team camp to see if they're ready to contribute to the World Cup qualifiers or maybe they're better off playing in the Olympic qualifiers with the under-23. Players like Corbianu, Halbuni, Stirring, 
uh, Tejon Buchanan. I think there's going to be a real assessment of if these players are ready to make that jump straight into the the, the, the Canadian men's national team. Um, and others obviously are going to be prepping with Moro Biello down at camp for the Olympic qualifiers, the ones that are younger, because it's, you're going to need a deep squad. We've kind of addressed this before. How many games the Canadian men's national team is actually going to be playing this year, Andy, with World Cup qualifiers, Olympic qualifiers, Gold Cup? You're going to need a deep squad. You're going to have to be able to rotate. Who knows what players may or may not come down with COVID. So you're going to have to dig deep in terms of your player pool. So John Herdman and his coaching staff staff are really going to be assessing what the group's all about and the third kind of priority of this camp or goal is to embrace the COVID reality like what's it going to be like undergoing the protocol and this isn't just the players it's for the coaching staff as well who haven't really been around this group for the better part of a year so they want to make sure that they're efficient in the way that they operate and if they're affected by any COVID cases or any ramifications of it that they're a bit uh, ready to pivot uh, when need be as well. So uh, it's going to be a short period of time, but it's going to be a really important period of time for this Canadian men's national team to come together. Did a really good job at answering what it is that John Herdman is going to try and accomplish because you're right. There's so much going on in the new year, a lot to chew on. You have to compartmentalize, but it does sound like the main national team, those, Olymp uh, excuse me, the World Cup qualifiers, and of course, Gold Cup seem to take the priority. Mauro Biello will work with the younger guys as they work mm -hmm. towards qualifying for the Olympics. A lot of new faces, as you mentioned. Is there one in particular, if you're going to help people focus in on one or maybe even just a couple, what would be some of those names? Yeah, I, I just wanted to mention that it sounds like two new players are going to be brought up into the Canadian men's national team for this camp that weren't previously announced. Insiders tell me, and this hasn't been announced yet, that Jaquiel Marshall Ruddy of Toronto FC, the 16-year-old, will link up with the group, kind of filling the spots vacated by Fraser and Miller. And uh, Theo Bear, the 21-year-old Vancouver Whitecaps striker, is likely to join up with this group. And from what my understanding is, there might be others who end up coming uh, to fill out numbers in this Canadian Canadian men's national team. Uh, the name that jumps off the page for a lot of people, Andy, and rightfully so, is Io Akinola. Um, yeah. His season with Toronto FC was excellent, but then he did go on and play with the U.S. men's national team against El Salvador in December. Now, as far as I've been told and what I understand about the situation is that Akinola had already agreed to come to camp with January, no matter if he was called into the U.S. men's national team camp, as he was. So this is something in a conversation that's happened between Herdman, Akinola, his family, his representatives. Over a period of time, he's been called into the Canadian men's national team two times prior. But unfortunately, whether it was form or fitness, it just simply didn't work out. So Akinola has been committed to this Canadian men's national team camp for quite some time. And it's going to be decision time at some point for Akinola. And if you're just if, if you're just sitting here as an outsider, where better suits or where would the better fit be for Io Akinola in his international career? And I just don't think there's without a shadow of a doubt, the Canadian men's national team is a place where he should be. He is from Brampton, Ontario. He plays for a Canadian club. This is his home country this is where who and wh where he identifies with. And let's be honest, Andy, he is one of many when it comes to the U S men's national team, when he scored a goal against El Salvador, there was barely a mention of Io Akinola's name. In fact, more people were talking about him up here North of the border than they were South of the border. That's not an indictment on him. It's just the reality with so many numbers in the U S men's national team program that his role is yet to be defined. With the Canadian men's national team, he can step right in and be an impact player from day number one under John Herdman, playing a different role than maybe a Jonathan David or a Kyle Aaron or even a Lucas Cavallini up top. He can be a star player of this country. He can be a role model for young Canadian players in Brampton and beyond. It just seems like a no-brainer. Although, of course, there are big names and big personalities who are in his ear. Teammates like Josie Altador are trying to convince him to play with the U.S. men's national team, which, honestly, why wouldn't Altador try to persuade him? But I think that pull, that Canadian pull, the allegiance is right there for Akinola. And I think that the better fit is playing and representing the Canadian men's national team um, mm. in, in plenty of World Cups going forward. I also wanted to bring up Marcelo Flores, 17-year-old player, with the Arsenal, with with Arsenal right now, he's uh, part of their academy 
Um, he's coming to his first Canadian men's national team camp, or at least he's on schedule to at this point. There has been very positive conversations between John Herman and Per Mertesacker, who runs the Arsenal Academy. Flores, his father, his team are completely on board. Arsenal were actually blown away with, uh, with the program that Herman presented. And for Flores, he can play for other commit eventually to either the Canadian men's national team or the Mexican men's national team. The thing is for Canada, and here's the pull for Flores to kind of come the Canadian way, is he's a bona fide number 10. Canada doesn't have a defined player in that position. Jonathan Azorio kind of can play that position. He's kind of a half 10, more of an eight, but Canada don't have that player. As a 17 year old, an extraordinary talent, from day number one, and I'm talking right now, the immediate future, Flores could be a big part of the senior Canadian men's national team plans, mm -hmm. and they can build some of what the team's doing around Flores. That has to be enticing. And Flores is on board. Through the month of December, he's been on Zoom calls with Herman, going through the, some tactical immersion, the way that Canada wants to play, how he fits in the equation. So from the sounds of it, uh, he's on board and wants to see what the Canadian program is all about. And there will be a push based on the prominence that he can have with this Canadian men's national team. What about some other two names that we do know? Atiba Hutchinson, are we going to see him represent the Maple Leaf again? And then Kyle Laren, I know we've discussed him at nauseum as well on One Soccer Today just because of what he's doing in Turkey. Gets a four-goal game, tied for the league-leading goals uh, in Turkey as well with the Siktas. Uh, catching the eye of, of, of John Herdman. Where are we with those two players? A couple teammates with Besiktas. Yeah. Atiba Hutchinson, for the camp that was supposed to go down in November, Atiba was committed. So it seems like Atiba is very much back in the fold and he will be for the March qualifying matches. And he's on exceptional form right now. So that's great news for Canadian men's soccer team fans and supporters. As for Kyle Laren, he's very much part of the equation as well. But the nature of his stop-start professional career and not getting regular games in the past has prohibited you know, a consistent run of form in John Herbin's men's national team side. But the way that he's playing right now, his goal scoring, form he's a player in the past that's been able to score in spurts you're just hoping that that level of consistency continues on uh till the month of march where he can step right into this team and i've asked john in the past like how would he work with john with jonathan david in attack and and he, i think that kyle laren is more of an inverted winger he's not an out and out number nine i don't think he holds up the ball well enough against two center backs he sometimes gets bullied off the ball it's just too easy for the defender but now that he's playing in a little bit more of a reserve role maybe from a wider wing position coming outside in it's really made a difference and he's caught some form and there's a i think there's a sense of urgency as well when he's not scoring he's not in the besiktas team so he's making it the life very difficult for the besiktas manager in that club to keep him out of the team and the more he plays the better it is for Canada and that's something that we're looking for from a number of Canadian men's national team players Andy like players need to be informed come March for these all important qualifying matches we see Theo Corbiano uh, a player who's just committed to play for Canada I'll tell you this John Herman is thrilled to have this player at his disposal he can play in all three positions across the front he is huge he is built Canada simply doesn't and has never had a player of his profile um, he's expected to be part of the Wolves FA Cup team this weekend uh, after that the, the hope is that he comes out and joins the Canadian men's national team at this camp. Wolves want him at this camp, but they're down some numbers right now. So that remains to be seen if Corbianu does end up coming to this camp with the Canadian men's national team. As of right now, the plan is for him to still come, but things can change very quickly. And that's how impressive this kid is. I, I just wanted to mention also, this camp is huge, not only for the attacking players, and I know that I mentioned a bunch of them, it's for those players in defensive areas because there's bona fide players who can start for Canada come March, March qualifiers. And John Herdman is thrilled with his options at fullback, left and right back. He's really excited to get Alistair Johnston into camp, the Nashville SC right back. He said he was just a complete defender on the season. And no matter if he played Morris, Pizarro, Areola, he always shut down those players. And having a solid and steady defensive right back allows him to play potentially a more 
attack-minded left back. Maybe Richie Larea moves over to the left. He caught the eye of the Canadian men's national team coaching staff because he did so well at left back for Toronto FC on the season. Zoran Basong, he's the X factor. He impressed the Canadian camp last January, but he hasn't played in a year. Now he's signed with the Montreal Impact. This will be a real assessment of where his fitness is at and whether he's better off linking up with the Olympic qualifying team uh, mm -hmm. come March and then potentially the men's national team for the Gold Cup up in the summer or whether he's ready to go from day one so some really good options there as well as the left side of center back Frank Sturring has been impressive playing for Den Bosch in the Netherlands uh, he's going to provide competition with Kamal Miller who I'm told was the most impressive center back at Canada's camp last January and Derek Cornelius so there's really some competition for spots and I get the sense that the Canadian men's national team coaching staff wants to make sure that they understand what they have and establish some kind of pecking order coming out of the, this camp mm -hmm. for those all important defensive positions. Depth, we always hear, is a good problem to have. So now that we've established that there's a lot of depth on this Canadian squad, it sounds like there's also going to be some good battles. As we head into this camp, where do you predict some of these battles happening? Like, where do you think it's going to be the most prevalent? Well, I think what's most important because there's plenty of attacking options in this team. Mm -hmm. And what I've been told from 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 the from the hop here is with Bermuda and Cayman Islands, those games coming so quickly that there's going to be some significant rotation in this team. So I think it's more it's it's less about figuring out who your first team is, who that team is just to play Bermuda, but how that team's going to be rolled out over the course of the competition. So, of course, the left back, right back scenario. I mean, I, I want to include Sam Atakubi. It's going to be a great test for him to see where he's at at left back. Christian Gutierrez of the Vancouver Whitecaps impressed over the course of the season. So there's some real competition at left back. At right back, is Tejon Buchanan better suited to play fullback or further up the field? That's going to be a significant battle. And I think there's some intrigue in the midfield. With Atiba Hutchinson coming back into the team, you know the coaching staff loves Samuel Piet as well, Jonathan Azorio. But Steven Eustachio is playing right now in Portugal, and he's playing on a level of some of the top central midfielders in the Portuguese first division. He's been linked to potential moves to some of the biggest clubs in Portugal and other significant clubs across Europe. He's that close to making that next step in his professional career. And the Canadian men's national team are grateful uh, to, and really uh, are, are thrilled to have a player like him part of the equation, a player that didn't really have a big role in those games against the United States in the Nations League, but a player that looks like a lock to play a significant role within the Canadian men's national team going forward. And just on those fullback scenario, the one name I haven't mentioned is Alfonso Davies. I just think with a player like yeah. him, you need to play him in attack, Andy. And that's where I think the planning of the Canadian men's national team is at this point. I know he plays for the left back for club, but he's just such a weapon and can play elsewhere in a more advanced role. And that's where I think he'll end up. How far are we into this discussion? And we just mentioned Davey's name now, but again, yeah. it just speaks to the incredible depth of this team. Now I know camp is soon to get underway. This is a great little primer. We're very excited to see them all coming together. Anything else you want to get us prepped for? Cause I know we're going to check in with you next week as well uh, as they actually do hit the pitch, but anything else here before I let you go? Yeah. It Looking ahead to March, I think it's time that the Canadian sporting community starts asking questions and speaking out as to where Canada is going to play that game against Bermuda. Mm. It's supposed to be played in Canada, but obviously with COVID, the situation, our government stance right now, I think it remains a little bit up in the air about where Canada is going to play. It hasn't been announced yet, but our government has made exceptions, not only for the NHL teams in this country, but they held a world championship hockey tournament in the world juniors in the province of Alberta. If you're going to make exceptions for one sport, yeah, I, I just think you have to make exceptions for others as well. It would require a two-day quarantine. It will take some savvy planning, but there has to be a commitment by our government to let the Canadian men's national team play these games on home soil. Like playing a game in Bradenton, Florida, or playing a game in your own backyard in Toronto, even if there's no fans in the stands, it makes a big difference when you're playing a team like Bermuda. And I just think that perhaps many people are underestimating the danger that a team like Bermuda possesses or could potentially, you know, 
cause for Canada. This is a team that took Mexico to the 93rd minute before Mexico beat them 2-1 last time out. They went to Panama, beat Panama, who were in the 2018 World Cup, beat them 2-0. Uh, this is a team that lost by just a goal to Haiti, to Costa Rica. So they are a better team than I think that's being advertised right now. Naki Wells is continuing to bang in goals with Bristol City as well. And Suriname continues to recruit top players of Dutch heritage and bring them into their program under their current head coach. Uh, they've won eight games out of 12. They're no easy task for Canada as well. So these home games are critical. They're crucial to advancement. And I just want, I, I just hope that there's a little bit more noise and a little bit more pressure put because this is a government that tends to operate on the way that things look optically, but we need to be able to back our Canadian men's and women's national soccer teams in order for them to play and succeed on the biggest scale on the sporting landscape. So hopefully common sense prevails and Canada's playing a home match come March 5th. Yeah, I just got approval, by the way, Calgary, Alberta is going to be a hub for a lot of winter sports right now, heading yeah. into your snowboard ski season. Um, so you're right on all those fronts. Gareth, appreciate the primer as we get set for the Canadian men's national team camp. And then we'll be checking in with you next week as things get going and uh, find out how, uh, how John Herdman feels about how his players have shown up and if they're ready to go. And of course, you can catch all the Canadian men national team games right here on One Soccer. That's Gareth Wheeler. I'm Annie Petrillo. We'll check in with you later.